Hey guys, how's it going? It's Nick with Urban Farm Boys. Um, I made a thing. Can you guys guess what I made? Oh wait, I'm wearing it. I'm so excited about this Granny Square vest or tank top. Um, and I have to tell you about it. First of all, can we just take a second? Let me back up a little bit. Take a second. Apriish, this is my first wearable that I've ever made. If you guys have been watching the last few weeks, I'm working on a granny hexagon cardigan and it's nearly done. Um, I'll show you guys once it is, but in the meantime, I made this this week and I'm kind of obsessed. If this is the first video of mine that you're seeing, I've been crocheting nonstop for the last six months and I've really been on a granny square kick and I've done all sorts of varieties of granny square things. I started by making a whole bunch of granny squares. My plan was to make a granny square blanket with 200 granny squares. I wanted a blanket that was 10 across and 20 down, which is an ambitious project. But I started with that and I've made to date since I started um, maybe like 70 granny squares or so which is pretty good progress. But then as I was doing them and doing more of them and watching more YouTube videos, I got interested in more and more other projects and that's kind of what I've been focusing on. So I made like 70 granny squares in the first month and then just kind of left them. So then I started making the granny cardigan, the hex cardigan and many other projects simultaneously. And the other day I was making a video um, you guys will see that I'm posting it today actually. So you'll see that just before this one where I was just chatting with you guys about projects and somebody asked me a question about um, bucket list crochet projects. And I said one thing I would really like to do is make uh, a granny tank top or a granny vest. Um, and then I was sitting here and I was like, you know, I have 70 granny squares. If I can figure out how to put them together, I could have one. Uh, and I immediately, it just like set off this chain reaction. And this is my result. So I'm going to show you guys one more time what it looks like. And then we're going to cut to me getting the harebrained idea late at night when I should be sleeping to make this. You can kind of see my process and then I'll come back and tell you guys kind of how I did it. And then I'm gonna to talk to you about my next projects because I'm already thinking about the next ones I'm gonna do. So I'm super excited about this. Uh, let's go back to me making it and then I'll come back and give you some thoughts. In the meantime, isn't it cute? I think it's cute. Okay, so. Let's back up like two days. See you in a minute. Okay, I have sort of a lot of granny squares, relatively speaking. Um, how many do I have? So that pile had 16. So we guess 15 per pile, about 60, 65 granny squares. Um, I had an idea. It was based off of, um, I've mentioned this in a previ previous video, the tank top that Tan was wearing in the most recent season of Queer Eye. I will put a picture in it. He's wearing a granny square tank top uh, and as soon as I saw it I was like yeah I need that. Um, I'm making a granny square blanket. I need 200 squares for my blanket and I haven't really done anything with these squares for a while because I've been working on other projects so I thought you know maybe I could try to make my own tank top out of the granny squares that I already have and then I said to myself no you need those for your blanket and then I argued again with myself I can do whatever I want I'm a grown man so I think I'm gonna do a little experiment what I'm gonna do is look through my squares um, pick some of the ones I like the color combos I like and then I'm just gonna lay them out and test something out I have no idea how this is gonna go um, all of these squares are made with loops and threads yarn from Michaels. I can't remember the exact details, but I will put it in the description below. And I tried to make, let's be systematic here. 
I tried to make squares so that no two squares have the same color combination. Um, I think so far I have succeeded, but I think if I'm going to make a tank top, I'm going to need somewhere around 20 squares. So, and I want them to be differing in color too. So I'll just show you guys as I choose some of the winners. Let's see. I have no idea what's about to happen. <laughs> I just got this idea and then I was like, let me turn on the camera and see. This one's very pink. That's fun. Um, maybe I'll try to choose. I might have to speed through this. I'm going to do likes and dislikes. I laid two next to each other that do have the same colors, exactly the same colors, but different order. I think I'll choose one of them. These are exactly the same colors as my um, hexagon cardigan that I'm making. So there's a little tribute to that one. I like this guy. Uh, who else? This is different colors. So we'll throw that in. This looks like Easter. Um, this looks like a flower, sort of. Basically what I wanna do is lay these out and then pin them together. I say pin them together. I tried that before with my um, cardigan and my my stitch markers just fell apart immediately. So I ended up just taking yarn and just like tying them loosely together. I'm just playing around because I'm trying to visualize a tank top in my head. I like tank tops as you've noticed. I also don't like really tight armholes. And so I have a hard time sometimes with visualization. What I'm gonna do is very quickly um, put the, tie these together and I think as I go I can um, figure out what the heck I'm doing so give me a few I'm gonna tie these together and we'll see what happens Okay, that took a little bit longer than I thought it would, but I have three, six, nine times two is 18. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So somehow my initial math was right. I've just tied these together. If anyone has a better idea for how to do this, please comment below. I just need to visualize. Um, Strip tease alert. I just want to see if this will work. So I have to be very careful. <laughs> I have to. I have to move. We have to readjust. Let's see. <laughs> hmm. So, you <laughs> know what to say. Take a look. First of all, I think the size, my size, um, works really well with this number of granny squares. I don't think I would need to add more. 
which makes life easier. Let me adjust the camera again here. <laughs> Does this look totally stupid? But, the shape works, I think. I need to look at myself in the mirror for a minute or two, and I'll be back. But, what I'm already thinking is, I need you guys' help, because I don't know how to do necklines. I might know how to do necklines, but, like, how do you finish around this neck and not have it be super square, like, I'm going to need to round off these corners, you know what I mean? And around the arms too, like I have to round that off somehow. But to be honest, like first impression, I'm, I think I'm digging it. I need to look at myself in the mirror. Bear right back. Okay, you guys did not warn me how absolutely ridiculous I look. <laughs> Why didn't you warn me, guys? I thought we were friends. However, having said that, I think this is going to work. I think this is going to work, and I think I'm going to do it. I am not going to do it today. I only have one day off a week. It's already 7.20. And if I start this, I'm not going to stop. And I have to be well rested for my first of six. But I can see it. I can visualize it. What I'm going to do is remove these little yarns that I tied everything together with. And then take a couple of pictures so I know what to do in the future. Because if this works, I'll do more with different patterns. This might be totally ridiculous, but you know what? Tan rocked it in Queer Eye. I can rock it here out on the forest where nobody sees me. I think this is gonna be cool. We're gonna pause here for now. I'm gonna pick this up in a few days, but for you, it'll only be a few seconds. So we'll see you in a second. Hi, welcome back to me in present day. So I thought I would tell you guys kind of my experience making this, some thoughts about how it went and what I would like to do differently. Um, and then I'm gonna show you because I've already gotten started on like three more of these projects. So overall thoughts, I think it turned out great. I am kind of impressed with myself to be honest because I kind of didn't know what I was doing and I just sort of figured it out as I went. I'm just gonna kind of turn so you can see the back as I go. Um, this vest, what do we call it? Tank top, I'll just call it tank top. Um, worked out really well with my size, my dimensions and the granny squares that I already had. So the front here is three by three squares. So there were nine here, same on the back, nine more for the back. 
So I needed 18 squares for that. And then for the sides, I needed two more on each side. So there's two here and there's two here. So that's 20. And then the neckline, you see two, there's two in the back. So that was four more. So nine, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. And I had plenty of granny squares. So basically what I did was I started by just connecting them all. I did a, a link a video that I looked at below. Um, I think they call it in, the invisible join. So I used yarn that was the same color just to join them all. Um, I worked, you know, on the wrong side and I connected everybody and I had all these ends sticking out everywhere. But once I joined like the front panel and the back panel and connected the sides and connected um, the straps or the, the parts that go over the shoulder, it started to look like something, which is what you saw earlier. Um, and then I had to figure out how to finish it. So what I did to finish this was on the bottom here, I just did, sorry, let me show you. Um, I did half double crochets and I did three, what did I do? One, two, three, four, no, one, two, three rounds of half double crochets. That's it. I thought it looked good. It made it a little bit longer because I feel like this is the perfect size, maybe a little on the short end, but um, three rows of half double crochet was kind of perfect. So that was easy. I was confident in my skills in doing that. Then I had to figure out how to do neck and arm holes. And that was something I was more stressed about because I don't know how to round off corners. So I had to kind of learn how to do that. And I did okay, not perfectly. So for the neckline, I just did, um, well, I actually frogged it back and started again. Initially, what I did was I continued with the half double crochet. And as I came to these corners, I was trying to round them off. So I kept going and it was still more square. So I went again and it was still a little bit square. So I ended up doing four rounds of half double crochet just to try to round out this neckline. And then I tried it on and it looked, it looked like a collar. It looked like this Victorian collar. It was really weird and there was like not much room for me <laughs> in this neckline. So I didn't like that. So I pulled it all back and I started again with that first row of half double crochet. And then I just did a slip stitch on top of that. And it rounded it out okay. The little microphone's in the way here, but it rounded it out okay, not perfectly. And it, I hope you can see the back should be the same, um, but it worked. And then on the arm line, I did two half double crochets. I actually did the arms before the neck and I did two rounds of half double crochet. And sorry for the armpit shot, but I did around the edges I tried to round it off and I think it worked maybe almost better on the arms. I did notice right here, this is the most square portion. I must have done something different because right here it looks more square. Back here, which is the same corner, it's more rounded, but here it's a little square. So I don't really know what I did there, but this looks pretty good, I think. This, not so good. And then over here, somehow they both look in between. Not, <laughs> not quite round, not quite square. But I liked how it turned out. I think it looks great, I have to say. And the neckline, I like. So overall, and it's just about just about the right size. Maybe the next time I would make it a little longer, like, you see, 
it's just a little short, not that I'm gonna be. <laughs> it's, it's actually pretty perfect in terms of size. And around, it works really well. So for perspective, I'm 5'11", I weigh like 165 pounds on a good day. Um, and th these granny scores were made with cheap acrylic yarn from Michaels. This is the loops and threads acrylic. I'll post what I used below. It's, on that note, it's thick, like it's a thick tank top or vest. Um, it's comfortable for sure, and I haven't washed this yet. I don't quite dare to wash it. I know I can. Um, I think it'll get a little bit softer as I wash it. But anyway, it's warm, like it's only April now. It's not very hot outside yet. This is nice for now, but I think it would be hot in the summer. And also I've mentioned, because I've shown these squares before, um, I tend to crochet quite tight in making these. I've used, I used a six millimeter crochet hook for all of these. And I like how the squares look a lot but they're pretty tight, right? So this will keep you warm. Like it feels like a sleeveless sweater. And of course, like I'm not wearing anything under it, but you could put a shirt under it. It's a warm tank top. So I think that's about all I have to say about it. Overall, I'm super happy. If you guys are on Reddit, I, I'm, I am, and I follow the, Brochet subreddit, which is like bros who crochet. And I posted a picture of myself wearing this. And I said, I am wearing my first wearable, like first wearable on a scale from zero to hideous. How bad is it? <laughs> the comments were amazing. I'll read them to you at the end. The comments were amazing. The comments, the vibe of the comments, by the way, I got like a thousand likes like 200 comments. The vibe of the comments was essentially, it is 10 out of 10 hideous and I 10 out of 10 love it. And that's kind of how I feel about this. I don't know where I would wear this. I mean, I should really wear it everywhere. Andrew, my boyfriend said, he will not be seen in public with me if I'm wearing this. I told him I would make one for him and he was like, oh God, no. Um, I'm obsessed. I will wear it. I will wear it. I will wear it out. I'm not quite sure where I will go, but I will also wear it here. The size, I keep pulling on it, thinking it needs to be longer, but it really is fine. Like I have t-shirts that, you know, show a little bit of skin if you raise your arms. This isn't actually really that bad. And you know, how often are you doing this? So I'm in love basically with this. It will, you know, have a place in history of the first wearable crochet project that I ever made. Having said all of that, the second it was done, I immediately thought about what to do next. And I now have three things I'm working on. I'm gonna make like three more of these in rapid succession. What I need to do first is finish that hexagon cardigan so that I can clear my mental space for these because summer is coming. If you have watched any of my videos on YouTube when I'm at home, like I like to wear tank tops anyway, this might be considered a vest. I'm gonna call it a tank top. There's some things I would do differently. So I'm gonna resituate myself and show you the next three things I wanna do. I'm gonna make more of these. So basically, as soon as this one was done, I started thinking about the next one. And then I pulled out all my other granny squares that I have. And I have about 50 more. No, what did I count? About maybe 45 more. So I looked through all of my granny squares. I chose out, I chose the next ones that I was going to do. And this is my stack for my next one, which I'm going to do almost immediately. Um, I chose like the colors I liked the best. But then I thought, maybe what should I do to improve on this one? So there's a few things I'd like to do differently next time. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is 
what you should do when you're working with granny squares and block them. So I bought this blocking board um, month, like a couple months ago uh, on Amazon and I've never used it. I haven't blocked these. I had planned to make 200 granny squares and as I got closer I was going to block them and before I make the blanket. But I thought, why don't I block these first? I don't really see an issue in this uh, tank top that comes from blocking, but you're supposed to. So I thought, why don't I try that? This is also sort of the perfect size for me, but I wouldn't mind if it was just a little bigger. And since I have the same size granny squares, I thought, well, why don't we try to block them first? So I just got these wet and blocked them. I can link this below um, if you guys like, but for example, here is a square that is blocked. These are, I got them wet. They're almost dry. But here's one that I've blocked and here's one that I haven't. So noticeable difference, I'm not sure. But they look flatter and they look square. So I'm basically gonna, this is my two block pile. I bought this square, but then I realized that I can't do, it's not big enough for me to do more than one little stack of these granny squares at a time. So I'm doing five now. So I'm gonna block them first. That's plan number one. That'll probably take a few days because I think each little stack of five will need to dry like overnight. So. We'll work on that. Um, another thing that I wanna do, so this definitely could be classified as a vest, but I don't wear long sleeve shirts and I'm not gonna <laughs> wear this out with a dress shirt underneath it. Um, I like the tank top thing, right? So um, it ended up being pretty tight here, close to my arm. I have two granny squares here. So the next one that I wanna do, I wanna remove this top square on both sides, obviously. So that'll make the armhole bigger. And then I think as I go around and finish it up, it'll look a little bit more rounded, but I'm gonna get rid of these two squares on the next one. And that'll make it feel a little bit more tank top-ish and less vest-ish. Um, so that's the next thing. So that subtracted two squares from my total requirement. Uh, I really like how the bottom works. I wouldn't change that. I can make it longer if I need to, but I really like how that turned out. The neckline and the arm holes. Um, this is where I would like input from you guys if you have any input. I do want to make them more rounded. So I did two rows of half double crochet around the arms and I think that worked out great. Except for this one little corner here, like I mentioned, it's a little more square, but I think I can fix that in the next one. The neckline to um, the one row of half double crochet with the slip stitch on top worked pretty well. I don't see wanting to make any changes. The only reason I did this with the half double crochet and the slip stitch instead of two half double crochet was because the neckline was getting small. And I also have a pretty big, can we just call it like the strap on the tank top? These are pretty wide and it's fine, absolutely. And I think removing these two squares and opening up the neckline or the arm hole line, um, I'll like it better. But I also thought, what if I make the straps just a little smaller? So these are granny squares that have uh, one, two, three rounds of colors and then a round of white at the end. So four total. And I thought, why don't I just make a few squares that only have three rounds instead of four total. So two colored rounds 
and one white round, they'll be a little thinner, right? And I can just connect those. I might, there's only two here. Um, I might need to make three of them because they'll be smaller, obviously. And that would also open up the neckline and also make it maybe a little bit longer. So I think that's what I'm gonna do for the next one. So I'll need nine here in the front, nine in the back, only one on each side. So that's 20 granny squares. And then probably six smaller squares for the, the straps. So that's what I'm gonna do soon, real soon. <laughs> so I'm blocking these, I picked 20 squares. I have five going right now. So I think I can do five at a time. So it might take a few days to get these all blocked because I want them uniform. So I'm gonna do those. In the meantime, I can make six squares that are a little smaller. I don't think I would need more than three on each side, but we'll see. That'll open up the neckline. I'll have the opened up arm line. And then I think that'll give me a little more wiggle room for the edging to help make it not so square-ish once all of that is done. I don't know what it'll look like. I think it'll look good. It'll open this quite a bit, which I think I would like better. Make it look more like a tank top really and less like a vest. So that's my plan. That's what I'm gonna do. And you guys will see because I'm gonna make it very, very soon, as long as all of, as soon as all of these are blocked. And I thought I might make it sort of tutorial style. Maybe I'll show you how I make my granny squares, like one, and then how I put it all together. So if that sounds interesting to you, please comment below or give this video a like so I know that's something that's worth doing for you guys. So yeah, that's my feedback. That's this one and what I wanna do better next time or differently at least. Um, yes, very obsessed. Then I made a mistake today. I was coming home from my clinical rotation and I passed by Lowe's and it was 79 degrees today. It's April 9th, it was 79 degrees. I wanted to go and get ferns for my front porch, hanging ferns. Last year I bought them like the first week of April and they did really well even with cooler temperatures at night. So I wanted to buy the ferns to get my planty porch started. If you like plants, so do I, as you can see. Subscribe to the channel because I have a lot of plant content too. Um, so as I was driving to Lowe's, I was like, oh look, there's a Michaels right next to Lowe's and I went into Michael's. What happened is there were no ferns at Lowe's, so I came home with no ferns, but I came home with more yarn and ideas for two more tank tops, two more granny square tank tops. And I may have made some granny squares today just to test them out. So I thought I would show you guys my two ideas and you can tell me what I should do next. I think I'm gonna do the regular one next just because I have it almost done. And then I'm almost immediately gonna make probably two more. So I'm gonna sit down now. I've been standing this whole time. I'm gonna sit down and show you my little yarn haul and the granny squares that I made. This is a pretty loud statement. Like this tank top is making a statement. It screams 70s, maybe 60s. Can you guys tell me? When did we start making granny squares? It's loud, I like the idea. I knew that if I was gonna make a blanket like this, it was gonna be a blanket with personality too. This, <laughs> it's, it's giving a message. Uh, but I wanted to, well, I accidentally found myself at Michael's, as you do. And I just started looking at the yarn and I got a couple of ideas. So I bought two cakes, Karen cakes, because they both gave me almost immediate ideas. One thing about making these is that you have to change color every round. It takes a little time, it's not hard, it's not super time consuming, but you need a bunch of yarn, a lot of ends to weave in, 
and and it's loud, right? Like this is a loud thing to wear. But I like the colors, because why not, right? Like if we're wearing it, let's give it some personality. So I was looking around Michael's and I saw these Karen cakes and I thought, hmm, what if I just did like continuous granny squares in the same color changing yarn so that I don't have to have five different colors, four or five different colors, don't have to weave in all these ends and I could have like a colorful center with a white edge. Now you guys have probably seen this, these edges are an off-white color, but I thought, how about white, white with these? So I bought two each of these. This one is Karen Cotton Cakes. So this one is 60% cotton and 40% acrylic. And let me show you the one that I didn't touch yet. It's very much like pastel rainbow. It's got all the colors of the rainbow, but sort of pastel. And it's 60% cotton. It's super soft. I've been nervous about cotton because everyone says cotton will shrink. But this is only 60% cotton, 40% acrylic. And I liked the sort of muted pastel rainbow color. Come on. This is an LGBT channel here. You gotta do some rainbow. If you're doing granny squares like this, none of these match. They're all loud, they're mismatched. It looks like, you know, something you'd see in the 60s or I don't even know when. But I thought we could be a little more homogenous and have them all match a little bit more. So I bought this one. And then I saw this other one, which was this guy. This is the Karen Blossom Cakes. They have a ton of different colors, these Karen Cakes. I've never bought them before. And this one is in the color Macaw. Let me show you. This looks like vacation to me. It looks like a holiday cocktail. So it's sort of rainbow squares, but the predominant colors are like orange, blue, yellow, green. You guys can see it. So in contrast to like a rainbow, it's a little more, a little more tropical. This looks like pastel Easter, like a gay Easter bunny. <laughs> and this one looks like a vacation to me. Um, this is also, I think, totally acrylic, yeah. No, it's not. 61% cotton, 39% acrylic. Hmm. I didn't even realize that when I bought it. Um, they are both, what are they? They're both uh, four medium weight. Uh, they both recommend a five millimeter crochet hook. The Karen Cotton Cakes is 250 grams and 485 meters. The Blossom Cake is 227 grams and 440 meters. So quite similar. I saw these and I was like, okay. Like the wheels started turning in my head. And I was like, I need to find a white to go with them. And I wanted white, white, not off-white. So, and I also wanted to find one that was similar like in size, which is sometimes tricky. What I committed to at the end was this Karen Simply Soft white yarn. So these Little guys are 170 grams, 288 meters. They recommend, it's also rated a four medium with a five millimeter crochet hook. And I looked at the yarn, I sort of compared them and they seemed pretty similar. This feels maybe a little bit thinner than the cotton, more similar to this guy. 
having made a couple of squares now with them, I'm not sure that I agree with that statement anymore. It's a little thinner than both, but it's close enough. It works. It's a white. I found like three different white yarns. This one was the best one. So the wheels started turning and I had to immediately come home and make a couple of granny squares. When I get an idea in my head, I can't stop thinking about it. I'm like, I have to visualize it. I have to make it so I can look at it and see if the idea in my head matches the reality. So the first one that I immediately gravitated toward was the cotton cake here, the rainbow one. It looks like there's a pretty good color vari variation for granny squares. I didn't want to have to go like yards and yards and yards before the next color. And this looked like it was pretty frequent color changes. So I thought, let me try to do that first. And the other thing that I wanted to try to do differently was these, I will link these below. It's the loops and threads yarn from Michaels. These are not really tight, but it's pretty dense. It's pretty thick, like I mentioned, it's a warm yarn. So I thought, let's loosen it up a little bit. So these yarns are definitely thinner than these, but I thought I also might wanna use a bigger crochet hook. So just to make it a little bit looser. So I started with a six and a half millimeter crochet hook. I did all of these, which are thicker yarn with a six. So I thought, let me go to a six and a half with a thinner yarn and see. I'll insert a picture. So I did one granny square with the six and a half and it was just too loose. I didn't like how it looked. Um, and the color change didn't really do what I hoped it would either. Almost the entire square was one color. It changed color right at the very end of the uh, three, the four round square. I think I did four rounds. So it wasn't exactly what I wanted. So I frogged it back and I bumped myself back down to the six millimeter crochet hook. And I liked it better with the six. It was looser than this, but tighter than the six and a half. But the color change wasn't happening frequently enough. So I had like I'm looking here, I'll show you in two seconds. I had three rounds and it was all the same color in both size crochet hooks, but it transitioned just at the very end in both. So I thought, well, I'm basically gonna get solid color squares. And I thought, well, maybe I can do that. And I thought, well, how about if I go one more round and see what happens? And then the color transition happened and so this is what I ended up with. This is, this is from this guy, the cotton cakes. I started, sorry, I started with the blue and right here it transitioned. And then I had like this purple ring around it. And it looks good, I like it. I finished it off and then I did a round with the white and I really like it. And what I kind of decided was this could be cool and they will all change. This is my cake that I was pulling from. And this purple color is the next one. And I can see in the center that there's more purple than there is blue. So I think once I make a bunch of these, um, the color variation will change more. It's like a harsh change, right? So like there's that transition just in the one cluster and then you move on to another color. So it's almost like a solid thing. As I make more of them, I think they'll all be varied. Not quite as exciting as I thought, but it might be more of like a sort of standard-ish rainbow color and maybe not quite as loud as this, but still brightly colored. I really like the white. The white is thin and it is thinner, I think, than the colored 
yarn, but it works and I think it's going to be really cool. I'm happy with the white. So also if you can see, I don't know, stay. Um, the thinner yarn with the six millimeter crochet hook, the like drape of this, it's quite a bit looser. Right, I don't know if you can see that. And then if I compare with this guy, which is the same six millimeter crochet hook, you see it's denser. I don't know if that helps you guys see, but this is definitely like a looser square, which I like. These ones are a little bit tighter. Like this can almost, it does stand up on its own. Sort of. You see? This one, there's no chance that it would stand up on its own. So I like that. I think that'll be better, maybe cooler to wear too. So that was a success, but I didn't love the color. So then I moved over to the other guy, the Blossom Cakes. You can see it just looks like the color transition is more frequent. So, and this yarn is also softer. Apparently they have the same sort of ratio of cotton to acrylic, but this, um, like is it called blossom cakes is much softer than the cotton cakes. So I had to make one of those as well. And this is how it turned out. I am already obsessed. So this yarn was softer. The color change was very frequent. But it, like it goes together. It's not like this harsh transition and the yarn is even like, how do you describe it? Like within the thread, there's a lot of color variation. So it was really pretty. This one started blue and then went orange and then went a little bit green. I think it's really pretty. And I put the white border. And the white border works with this one too. The yarns feel different. The, this one, I've heard, I watch Secret Yarnery a lot. She talks about some yarn feeling like a washcloth. And I can see that this Cotton Cakes one gives washcloth vibes. It feels like you could scrub yourself with it. This one feels much softer and it's really pretty. So then I had to make another one because the color change kept happening. And so I made a second one. And check this one out. I love how that looks. If you compare the two. I don't even think I've gotten to all the colors yet. There's not as many, it's not quite rainbowy. So maybe these are all the colors, but they look so different, right? So I almost immediately decided this is the next one. This is what I'm gonna do. I made two, I need 18 more. I'm gonna connect them with the white yarn, same style as this. I also, because um, this is thinner yarn, I did an extra row. So these guys all have three colored rows and one off-white row, totaling four. These ones, I'm doing five rows, five rounds, I guess. Um, four colored rounds with one white round. And the interesting thing is these are almost the same size. but slightly bigger. 
just slightly. Maybe like an eighth of an inch on each side, just slightly bigger. The other thing that I like about that is that this one could be just a little bit bigger. It's fine the way it is, but it could be just a little bit bigger. So I think with these being just slightly bigger each, the cumulative effect is that it'll be perfect, I hope. And then I'm still gonna do straps that are thinner. So maybe for these I'll do, I don't know, three rounds in the color and one in the white. We'll see. I have to do 20 of these first and then we'll figure the rest out. But what do you think? Comparing the two. At least these are all gonna sort of match, right? Like they're the same colors. I think it's gonna look really cool. This one also cool, but very loud. And I don't really love necessarily all the colors. I like that they're all different. This one will look a little bit more planned. I think it's gonna be cool. So that's what I'm doing. I like this too. I'm not giving up on this guy. It doesn't feel as nice, but it's very light and airy. Um, so anyway, that was my evening. I get an idea in my head and I just have to explore it. I think so what do you guys think? Let me know your feedback. Let me know what you think of this tank top. Let me know what you think about my plan for the next one. Everybody's being blocked. We're gonna have one less square here at the arms and then thinner straps and hopefully a little bit more of an open neckline. I think it's gonna look really cool, but I'm almost more excited about these. I'm gonna do both. So tell me what you think, comment below. Please subscribe to the channel so you can see my progress. And you can also follow me on Instagram, Nikas Arbata, I'll link it below as well, um, because I post like daily over on Instagram. I'm excited about this. Sorry that it was a little messy in the beginning. I just, I was so tired, it was late, and I just got this harebrained idea into my head and I had to like piece it together. But this is the end result. Also, I got like a thousand likes on the subreddit for Brochet. Um, oh my God, the comments. I'm about to run out of space on my memory card. But I'm gonna, I have to read you guys some of the comments. So I posted a picture of me in this last night uh, on Reddit. This was my post. And I said, my first wearable from zero to 10, how hideous is it? Guys, <laughs> this is Brochet. I have as of right now, 1200 likes and 80 comments and the comments crack me up like the crochet community is so funny i am well aware this is a look and it's not for everyone so i said from zero to ten how hideous is it let's just look at some of the top comments 10 on the hideous scale 10 on the fabulous scale love it someone said it's very bold i'm like <laughs> i hear that in like a southern judgy accent it's very bold it looks well made and on trend. It's a trend I dislike, but if you like the trend, embrace it. I love that it isn't split down the middle and I also love the neckline. The whole thing and its continuity is fantastic. Oh dude, it's hideous, but it's our hideous and we love it. It's so ugly, I love it. It's awesome and I wanna wear it. You look fabulous in it. Someone said, 10, I hate granny squares. Execution looks top notch though. Have fun with your creation. Someone said, you make it work, bro. I think it's dope. I would add a little length to the next one and see if there's any way you can start rounding out the neckline. Yes, please. It's awesome though. It's awesome and you wear it well. Uncross those arms though, so we can see it in all its beauty. It's cool, but hideous, sorry. Super well made, but not my style. Someone said, 10 out of 10, absolutely hideous. I love it. Awfully fabulous, my dude. 
10, but in a glorious way. Amazing colors and it looks great on you. It is unhideous. Someone just wrote obsessed. Dude, this shreds. Good job. Is that what the youth are saying these days? Dude, this shreds. Speaking of which, someone said, hi, yeah, no dude, f***ing shut up, this rocks. Someone wrote, post pics of people in it on Reddit, but don't let people go out in public in it. Someone said, 11 out of 10, make a matching hat and slippers and robe. That's a lot of look. 12 year old me from 1973 is in full squee. Well done. Dude, we all love granny squares. Who here would think this is hideous? It's glorious. Someone said, ever see someone and be like, I would feel safe in a room with them. That's the energy I'm getting and I love it. I love that too. This makes people feel safe in a room with me. Someone said, it's hideous in a way that I would stop you on the street to compliment you on it. 10 out of 10, I love it a lot. Someone said, oh, that thing is pretty atrocious. I absolutely love it. Thank you for sharing. Someone said, 100 out of 10, amazing job. Someone said, I honestly wish you stopped one row short to make it a crop top. That would take it to a new level. Um, even better if it was with matching shorts. Ooh, that would be a look, guys. Crop top, I think I'm a little too old for crop tops. Now, Tan from um, Queer Eye. His was definitely crop top. I don't know what he looks like without a shirt on, but I don't have the tummy for that. It would just show like a muffin top. So no to the crop top. This is almost crop top-ish, yeah. No, maybe once I get my summer body when I start working out and going to the gym and... And finally someone said, it's a 10, but in a campy way because it's so fun and unique, if that makes sense. I think fashion is all in attitude and the people who wear outrageous outfits are always the ones who wear what they wear so confidently. And you wear this well. I was cracking up reading all these comments on Reddit. So. Let me know what you think below. Do you hate it? Do you love it? Is it fabulously hideous? I kind of love it. I'm gonna wear it. I'm gonna wear it out. You know how many people will comment on this? Even if they don't like it. It's a good conversation starter. <sighs> We're done. Thanks for hanging out guys. It's a long video. Um, if you would like more of a sort of tutorial style video where I show you how I put it together, comment below. If not, if you're a crocheter, I'm sure you can figure it out. It's pretty darn straightforward. I say that now, like I've only been crocheting for six months or so, but I was able to figure it out. So I'm sure you can too. But anyway, comment below regardless, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Please look at my links below. I will give you some video references some of the videos I took inspiration from. I will post a link as well to my fundraiser. I'm trying to raise money to run the New York City Marathon in partnership with the World Wildlife Fund. If you would like to contribute to that, you'll be my best friend. And I have a giveaway going. Um, I'll put a link below to the video where I describe the uh, giveaway. We got just a few days left. So if you wanna win some free crochet hooks from me, go to that video, check it out. All the details will be there. So thanks guys for hanging again with me. I need to go to bed. Why is this a trend? I stay up late, I sleep not enough, but I keep making nice crochet things. So anyway, I'm also looking at my plants. I need to do some plant care. It's bedtime. Thanks for hanging guys. And until next time, take care.